Hello everybody, God bless you, good morning, good morning. Listen, I want to thank all of you in YouTube land for sending such encouraging comments and encouraging words. Praise God, I want to thank uh, Sister Robert for sending such an awesome blessing to the Cash App. We also want to thank Brother Niles. I like what you said, the Holy Ghost 24. Ah, uh, I want more here in 2024. God shall restore. I want to thank you for sending your awesome blessing to my Cash App. And blessing me and my wife as we're praying for you and all around the world. Our cash app is Flame of Fire 8 on the Pastor Warrior Adams. Listen on YouTube land. I want you to stay tuned. God gave me a message that's going to bless you and your family and your children. Praise God. I believe God can turn your tears into joy. I'm going to be teaching about who was King James. Who was King James? I'm going to be talking about that. Uh, a lot of us read the King James version of the Bible, but a lot of people don't even know who King James was. So I'm going to be teaching about that. I'm going to be teaching out how to cast out demons, how to identify demons, how to identify witches and warlocks, and how to cast out devils in the name of Jesus, and how to make the devil stay out of your life. Because many people have gotten the livid, but you did not stay the livid. No, that's deep. It's one thing to get the livid, another thing to stay the livid. So I'm going to teach you how to get delivered and stay delivered. Uh, but according to Galatians chapter 5 verse 1, where it said, stand fast. Hallelujah. Therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ had made you free. And be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. So stay tuned for my series on YouTube. I got another YouTube video coming out today. I have a lavender suit on. I'm, I'm doing some teaching about hell, about the horrors of hell. So you don't want to miss this. And about angels. God bless you, young man. Bless you. I'm happy to see you. Tell someone you too land. You are too blessed. You too blessed to be stressed. And in the year 2024, God going to bless you with more. That's right. Amen, brother. We praying for you. Thank God you. is with you right now this morning. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you so much. God bless you, young man. I see greatness in you. God bless this young man. God is raising him up. It's good to see young men who love God. We know a lot of women love the Lord, but it's good to see the young men who love God. So many young men grew up without father figures. Okay, I want to respond to somebody on the YouTube. Everyone doesn't always leave a goody-goody comment, but it comes with the territory. I'm a preacher. So you got those who criticize, there's those who point fingers, and unfortunately as people as people in the church, I'm used to that. You know, it comes with the territory. As you begin to mature, you learn how to overcome that and focus more on the Lord. Praise God. And criticism I can take constructive criticism, then you can tell when people are just throwing accusations. But God bless this brother who came to the YouTube. Uh, you came to my YouTube and you said, um, it's time to upgrade your wardrobe. And it's time to upgrade the scriptures. Then you said, there's no rapture. Well, I already preached about there's a rapture. It's not my words, it's in the Bible. There is a rapture. According to Matthew chapter number 25, uh, Jesus talked about the rapture, even though even though the name rapture is not in the Bible, okay, but it said we'll be caught away. The rapture it talks about in the book of First Corinthians, chapter 15, starting from verse number 55 on down. It said, We shall be changed in a moment, and as a twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. The dead in Christ shall rise. We are alive, who are remain shall be caught up to meet him in the air. Uh, the book of Thessalonians talks about the rapture. So there is a rapture. Now, as far as upgrading uh, my wardrobe, no, we should upgrade our hearts. God is concerned about your heart. There's a lot of folk where, now, first of all, I think I dress very nice. Just because it's 2024 doesn't mean I have to upgrade in my suit. People want to upgrade in computers. All that is great. They say, oh, it's 2024. I got to upgrade in this and upgrade and get the new house and a new car. Nothing wrong with those things, but those are material things. Those things are going to pass away. Floods are washing houses away. We ought to be concentrating in upgrading and getting our hearts right with God. Look what the Bible declares in Jeremiah chapter number 17, verse number 9. God said through his prophet Jeremiah, the heart is desperately wicked. It is a seafood above all things. What it says, who can know it? I, the Lord God, knows the heart. So why people are concentrating with up, upgrading in the, the year 24, and nothing wrong with that in the natural world, 
But the Bible said to set your affections on the things above and not the things beneath here on the earth. Because all these things are going to pass away. But God's word is going to live forever. The devil can wear a nice suit. But the heart ain't right because it's still wicked. Come on. So you're concentrating on me upgrading in my wardrobe. No, I don't agree with that. I want to concentrate on getting closer to God and getting closer to Jesus. Number two, there's no such thing as upgrading the scriptures. We're not supposed to add. We're not supposed to add. The Bible said I take away from the word. We're supposed to quote it the way it is. That's a private folk. I want to add their own opinions. God was against, Jesus Christ was against people who had a spirit of heresy. They want to add their own opinions. They call themselves a great in the word. God doesn't need no help. God didn't need no help when he spoke the world into existence and he said, let there be light and there was light. That was great enough right there. God doesn't need us to upgrade his word. God is above us. He's the master. He's the judge. We need help from God. Oh, come on. God doesn't need no help to upgrade his word. When he spoke it, he means what he say. And it's great the way it is. So we don't upgrade the word. We just obey the word. Oh, hallelujah. Because Jesus said, if you love me, he said, keep my commandments. God don't hate black skin. God hates a black heart. So don't let love depart. Just like God don't hate whites, but he hate envy and strife. God doesn't hate Indian. So let's give God thanksgiving. Just like God don't hate Asian. God's grace is still amazing. God can save a Jamaican. Yes, he can. God can save a Puerto Rican. Yes, he can. God can save an African. Yes, he can. But it's up to you. Because God doesn't force the Bible on nobody. What I love about God is that God gives us free will and free choice. God doesn't force himself on nobody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Have a good day today. Praise the Lord. There's those who choose to follow the devil. And there's those who choose to follow God. And there's a lot of people who think they're God. Yes, the Bible says he are gods and songs are 82. But we are not the immortal God. David said the God that we serve is a God above all gods. When David said he are gods, that's spelled with a lowercase g. But the God that we serve, who's above all God, all gods, you understand, is spelled with a capital G. Now look what Jesus said about the wardrobes. Matthew chapter 23, verse 27. Look what he said. He said, Woe to you scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. Now, this is Jesus speaking. Christ didn't always talk goody-goody, you know. There's times he said things, he had to rebuke certain folks. Jesus was also uh, a righteous rebel. Look what he said. He said, woe to you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. That means people who are not real. For you are like white-washed toad tombs, which outwardly appear beautiful, but within are full of dead people. In other words, you're wicked on the inside. Oh yes, your wardrobe is nice, but on the inside, your heart is wicked. The Bible said the same thing Christ formed himself as an angel of light. Oh, he, ain't nothing wrong wearing a nice suit, but God wants us to bear the fruits. Come on. You hear the difference between fruits and a suit? Oh, a lot of folks wearing nice suits and still working roots. Uh-oh. Doing which crack? Come on. Jesus said, Woe be to the scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Other words, you look good on the outside. Yes, your wardrobe look holy. Oh, yes, you upgraded your wardrobe. But on the inside, you just like dead men bones. You like the, the truth. You're dead on the inside because you're wicked. You're jealous. You're envious. My message today is change your atmosphere. So thank you for the comment, my brother. I just wanted to correct you. You said no disrespect. Well, no disrespect to you. But I'm going to tell you what the word says. I just quoted what Jesus said. I don't have to upgrade what he said. What he said was good enough. Just accept it the way it is. I don't have to add. I take away from the word. 
Ah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank God for the Holy Ghost bird. Don't got to take no drug overdose. All you need is the Holy Ghost. Getting the Holy Ghost is even better than taking a drug overdose. Don't need no dope. God is a great hope. I'm not talking about the Pope. You don't need no crack. Just run to where Christ is at and get out the prayer mats. And he'll set you free from crack and cocaine when you get in God's domain. And when you get in God's domain, you no longer will be insane. Now you don't need no crack or cocaine. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Don't got to smoke no weed. God is all we need. I feel Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Change your atmosphere. There's a lot of negative atmospheres, yo. Jesus didn't do miracles in certain atmospheres because the people did not believe in his own time. That's what the Bible says. Jesus Christ did not do many miracles in his hometown. They had a spirit of unbelief, envy, and jealousy. Oh, we knew Jesus says he was a child. Who did Jesus think he is? We knew his mother. But they really didn't know who Jesus was in the spirit. They just knew him as being a carpenter's son. They didn't realize that he was a Messiah. So Jesus did only some miracles. Other areas, he did many miracles because they had faith. They believed. We gotta change the atmosphere and cut off negative people. People who are negative, cut them off if you're trying to go somewhere in life. If they want to stay on the same level and still sell drugs, still get the pants half down and the drawers half sewn and trying to be a gangster, still want to keep prostituting, don't want to change, making all these babies and not paying child support, they don't want to go nowhere. So listen, I love you, but I got to cut you off because I'm trying to grow. I want to get married one day. You say that to yourself. I've only been married for three years so far. I want to upgrade. I want an education. I want a degree. Folk ain't trying to go nowhere. You got to change your atmosphere. You understand? Hallelujah. I love my mother. But I had to cut ties with my mother and lie to my family because like, some family was positive, but some just had a negative atmosphere about them even though they go to church. I love my mother, but my mother would speak so negative. I remember one time she told me, she said, I told God, I don't want no grandchildren. Why would she tell God that? That's negative. Now, my father died when I was three years old. So I thank God my mother did raise the children by herself. Praise God. So I give her credit for that and I still respect her, but she was just so negative. Sometimes mothers and fathers speak negative over their children. Uh, I was told, she said to me when I was a little child, she said, you too slow. You can't count your sister count better than you. Now that's negative. Now, if I had a child, I would encourage my child and say, you can do it. I would be a more of a motivator. So I'm more of one who would encourage you. Some people, they always got something bad to say to you. Got nothing good to say. Always got a criticizing word, even in church. Everybody who jump and shout, it doesn't mean they say the devil can jump and shout. That don't change the fact he's the devil. You got to get away from people who are negative because when they're always putting you down, they will give you a low self-esteem. So I said, I love her, but she just too negative. One time I said to my mother a long time ago, I said, I'm going to believe God that God will give my brother in North Carolina a child with his wife because his wife had a mis a miscarriage for my mom that. And my mom got mad. She said, oh, no, they can't have no children. I said, but mom, I'm going to believe God for a miracle that they can have children. Oh, we argued this years ago. Way back. I've been preaching the gospel since I was a child. She said, oh, no, they can't have no children. Oh, uh, she had a miscarriage. I said, but God is able to give her a child. She kept going negative, negative. Then she got mad at me. Oh, I can't talk to you. You rebellious, rebellious. How? I'm trying to speak positive, and you're speaking negative. See, I had to get away from that atmosphere. But word curses, that's like sp speaking out of word curses. See, the Bible said life and death is in the power of the tongue. So you got to be careful what you speak 
because your words had power. So speak positive over your children. You don't tell your child, well, you can't do it. No, you tell your child, you can do all things through Christ who strengthened you. Speak blessings, not curses. Because if you speak word curses, that's doing witchcraft. No, you tell your child, I love you. First tell your child, Jesus loved you first. But if you abusing your child and you molesting your child, child molesters are going to hell. We got too many child molesters up in the church. God bless you, man of God. Happy to see you. Hallelujah. God bless you, young man. Happy to see you. I see greatness in you. Thank you, young man. I like to encourage people. Because a lot of us don't get enough encouragement. We have to encourage each other. Hallelujah. Because iron sharpens iron. You'd be surprised how the encouraging word can stop somebody from committing suicide. There could be somebody walking around suicidal and you never know it. But your encouraging word can put a smile on their face. And let them know you don't got to take no drug overdose. All you need is a Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Getting the Holy Ghost is even better than taking a drug overdose. Don't need no dope. God is a great hope. I love my mom. I thank God for her. I'd have changed a lot of my atmosphere. A lot of them spirits begin to follow me. I had a pastor. Rubbing in a man of God, but he was negative too. Even though God used him in a mighty way. He told me one time, uh, I came from the Bishop William M. Bonner. He was a great man of God, but it's very negative. Sounds just like my mother. It was something about me, folks, like the always has something negative to say. So I could have a low self-esteem. I had to learn how to encourage myself. I had to change my atmosphere. My pastor told me uh, he would call one of the assistant pastors and say, I want to speak to uh, Minister Warren. He had me in the office. 